Well, hey, we're back. Anyway, I have just desoldered the um, main high voltage transformer from uh, from the circuit board, and I'm going to uh, hook up the uh, voltmeter and see what kind of conditions we get here. I'm sorry for the delay, but. Anyway, I probably wind up editing this. Anyway. Click across there, and then uh, let's see, we're in dim bulb test. I'm switching on voltage up. We've had it up to 120 before, so all right, let's fire it up. Good AC bolts. Can you see that okay? Probably not. That seems alright. That, that is no S bueno. Well, there we go. There's 240 volts across there. 239 volts across so the center tap the outside windings don't appear to be I don't understand that way oh there's 476 volts okay so that means something on the board is goofy that's a good sign that's a real good sign that means the transformer isn't shot and I notice when this is all disconnected from the circuit and I'm uh, engaged the uh, Engage the energy to the uh, transformer. We do not. The dim bulb isn't. You can see the dim bulbs aren't uh, aren't stroking out on me like they were yesterday. So my work to find the uh, the culprit is going to be in here somewhere, somewhere on this, probably in the diode or something around here. Anyway, I'm gonna see what I can do to test figure out how to test the uh, diode tube and we'll go from there all right that's at least some progress all right here we are again uh, I did some checking here um, I'll, I'll let you see what I found here let me, let me turn this on so and uh, I'm gonna get this in the shot so Hang, bear with me one second while I move this in. View. All right. Um, what I discovered after I desoldered the transformer, these uh, seven wires here that come from the high voltage transformer, and they are responsible for generating the B plus and the plate voltages for this device. Anyway. And on this circuit here, the white wire, which feeds the, uh, feeds the voltage doubler right here. This is the white wire, it's supposed to be 175 volts AC. It's a little low, but I don't think it's gonna be something that'll keep it from working properly. Anyway. We can uh, demonstrate that this is actually working all right. And we'll plug this into the isolation transformer. It's on current limit. We'll give it 120 volts. And I will turn on the, uh, energize the power to the unit, and that will uh, fire up the the, the start the heaters up and that'll put a little bit of a load on this thing but when I flip the standby switch you should see the uh, full AC voltage coming out of the transformer here we go there now that's uh, 150 154 volts 153 and some change okay now that's supposed to be 175 that's 20 percent but I guess we can live with that I hope um, maybe if Mr. Carlson knows better and he sees this, he can let me know. Okay, now this is supposed to be this here. 
Uh, this supplies one side of the, uh, the this has got the voltage doubler circuit 210 volts to supply the the pass the pass elements the uh, 6L6 tubes okay it's supposed to be 210 volts AC and as you can see we've got 186 volts which is kind of strange because I was getting about 20 minutes ago wow. our power sagged off a little down to 116 I'm going to put it back up to 120 clip on and see what we get that's strange now earlier just a little while ago I was getting over 200 volts <coughs> I was getting 227 volts AC and now I'm only getting 188. Huh. Let's, let's see something here. There we go. Current went off. And now I'm getting 200 and getting full B plus or full full voltage. I had the current limit on and it was uh, dragging down the uh, this is only 175 watt um, transformer for my uh, isolation transformer. I <laughs> wish it was a little bigger, but you know cost and all um, all right so that's that's acceptable more than acceptable let's go back and check these the 150 with the uh, current limit out we'll try that again here we go 185 supposed to be 175 excellent okay now moving on over to the uh, high voltage side I'll just jump straight across both the red the, the yellow red is a red yellow stripe indicates the uh, center tap and these are the two outside windings let's uh here we go all right 633 volts and uh, that's the red wires here it's supposed to be 600 volts ac and at 635 that's plenty of voltage so that is the good news of the day the transformer this transformer right here, which is unobtainium in, in this day and age, when it was new. Let's see, transformers. I've got the it was only like six dollars for this transformer, and this came out. <laughs> It'd be probably five or six hundred now. Anyway, the dollar ain't what she used to be. Okay, we're going to power that down, turn off our isolation transformer, unplug the unit, <clears throat> and we'll continue to troubleshoot. I pulled the, uh, I pulled the, yeah, okay, this is a six, oh, this isn't it, here's the diode. This is the rectifier tube, it's a 6x4. Um, the heater element, it was, it was heating up, but I, I have no way to know if that's, you know, the indication that, it, it, there's more to it than just having a the emission um, I have a tube tester coming uh, it's supposed to be here tomorrow or Saturday It'll be a UPS and uh, that'll be kind of nice to get but anyway I was checking through the board here and I I hadn't tested this uh, the potentiometer which is this potentiometer right here the 400 volt adjust which is right across the right across the common and B plus it's supposed to be 200 K and uh, we'll switch our meter into resistance let me change the probe out and put a test lead in here and uh, go across the terminals here uh, 180 K that's not too bad it's supposed to be 200 that's within 10 percent if I go to this side test it on this side I get a little over 200k across there when I uh, 
when I just ticked a little bit ago, it was under 10K. And uh, I wonder if it's shorting out through the case because the case is soldered to ground. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to desolder this thing and uh, take it out and check it. i got to reach around the camera here and grab my desoldering iron. By the way, this this is a Hako, Hako knack, knockoff. I got it um, from uh, Circuit Specialist. 110 bucks, and uh, this thing is a beast. As you can see, it just sucks the solder. I already did the other, the other two contacts, and then I used the uh, my soldering station to uh, and some. Uh, solder wick to desolder this because the, the, I don't have any tips to fit around these odd shaped pins that are used to part of the, part of the case on that potentiometer. There's no getting it off. Well, hello everyone. <clears throat> We're back again. And as you can see on the main circuit board, I'm missing one of the uh, electrolytic capacitors. And the reason is, I thought I, I had, I was doing some experimenting here a little while ago, but I thought I had the, the recording going, and it turned out I didn't. And I had this thing to where I uh, was running up the voltage a little bit to see what kind of current it would pull, running it through a, the current meter. And uh, it was upside down, you know, and I was checking some voltages, and all of a sudden there's a bang! And, uh, well... Turns out, in my haste and excitement, I uh, I put this in the wrong way around. I put it in the negative, <laughs> the negative to positive, and it didn't like it. It let the magic smoke out along with some nasty, smelly liquid all over my my bench here. And there's the remnants right there of the goo. I desoldered it, and uh, I was going to show that, but I evidently didn't know how to turn on the camera. Anyway, so I I ordered a. Another, I, of course, I did have a another 70 micro or 80. This is actually 82 microfarad, 450 volt. I didn't want to put a 68 in, so I went with the 82s. Anyway, well, it should be here either tomorrow or the next what day. What I did was I no. took a, one of the old caps and I checked it, and it, the leakage wasn't it was acceptable. I resoldered it in, fired it up, and I got some voltage for the first time that I should have been looking for. I got rectified voltage, the rectifier is working fine, but it immediately pegs right at the 240 volts and just sits there. There's um, no control with this uh, potentiometer. I checked the pod, it seems fine. But the tubes, these regulator tubes, I don't see any life in them and there's no blue glow, no nothing. So I'm afraid it may be those tubes, uh, I don't know. I need to figure out a way to test the tubes. I don't want to just go buy that. They're about 10 bucks a piece, and I don't want to just go buy two tubes and find out that's not the problem. So I need to do some checking around to find out why. I got a little something here I want to share with you guys. I'll show you what I found here. Well, this arrived yesterday, or yeah, yesterday. Um, I picked it up on eBay. Um, some of the screws don't, don't quite hold the wood anymore. Um, the guy that shipped it was a complete, uh, well that's just not, let's say he, he shouldn't be shipping anything. I wouldn't let him ship styrofoam. Uh, this was in a box just big enough to hold it and there was something rattling around inside. Turns out it was the back of one of the potentiometers inside. It's a, it's a crazy looking thing inside there. I, this is the first tube tester I've ever even really had my hands on it outside of a, you know, the ones I used to have at the supermarket when I was a kid. Anyway, I have no idea how this thing works. I'm a little bit hesitant to just plug it in. I'm sure there's some caps and stuff in here that need looking at. Well, actually, there is a couple of capacitors I saw in there. Um, I'm going to go through it, clean everything up, replace anything that looks funky, and then see if I can't find an instruction manual or, you know, some information on the thing. It's, it's, got, the, it's got the tube roll here, so it tells you, you know, what settings to do this on for the given tube. But, you know, I don't know much about it, but I will find out, and I'll get it working, and hopefully I'll have a viable tube tester. Anyway, thanks for watching.